Sponsored by MaximumMods.com Hello and thank you for tuning in to my second video of my Cosmos 2 build lock series. So in this video I'll be talking about my radiators and where am I going to mount these radiators as far as locations for mounting those and how to mount those as well as mounting a lot of the blocks and getting a lot of that done so let's get started. Okay so first what we're going to be talking about is mounting the 360 millimeter radiator at the top. Now looking at the case um, by default it comes with these little tabs that are sticking down in the front which is not going to allow you to just simply screw the 360 millimeter radiator in. You're going to have to bend these back but these are very easy to bend. You could just use your finger and uh, bend those back. So once you get those uh, flat, you could go ahead and take your radiator and you should be able to fit it up there. Now the problem with this case is it doesn't give you a lot of room to set up a push-pull configuration. Um, now looking right now, you can see the fan underneath. Um, there's not too much room there to even place a radiator. I mean, you may be able to get away with it if you're going to use like a slim uh, form factor fan and a radiator together but it'd be very close even with that. So what I recommend is either putting the fans underneath like how it is right there or placing the radiator underneath and have the fans on top. So either way um, you're going to be either doing a push configuration or a pull configuration. So what I decided on doing is doing a pull configuration. My fans will be placed up top, the radiator will be underneath and it will be pulling the air through the case, through the radiator and then exhausting out through the top. And to access the top compartment where you'd be putting either your radiator or your fans, there's a simple thumb screw on the very back. Just unscrew, and the top will just lift right up. Now, the best location for the 240 millimeter radiator will be the HDD cages under the bottom mid plate compartment. Now, this was made actually for a 240 millimeter radiator. As we can open it up, we'll see all the HDD cages there which we won't be using so we'll go ahead and remove those in a little bit. Now the good thing about this um, putting the 240mm radiator down here is that there's a side vent on the side panel which is a great intake for your air, for your fans, um, for your radiator and the 240mm radiator will fit perfectly in this spot. You won't have to mod out anything whatsoever. Now to remove the HDD cages let's go ahead and flip the case around to the back and you'll see these four thumb screws that are actually holding the HDD cages in place so all you have to do is remove those thumb screws and the HDD cages will simply pull right out. Now what I like to do when I'm mounting my radiators and figure out a place where I'm going to put them I always kind of visualize in my head how I want my tubing to be routed before I actually mount the radiators. So so with me my big goal is aesthetics. Um, I really like nice clean tube routing so what I'll do is actually just to do kind of a mock-up build first, place the radiators in the case, don't bolt anything down, and just simply route tubing where I think the components should be and should go. Now the cool thing about this is it does have a mid plate which does have a actual grommet cut out there so it will be very easy to run my tubing from my reservoir down into the 240mm radiator and then what I'll have is my pump actually uh, return the fluid and I'll have the tubing going up the back of the motherboard so you won't be able to see the return to my 360mm radiator at top. So that's a good thing about this and it does offer plenty of room behind the side panel or the um, back motherboard tray for your cables and uh, your tubing. Okay for now what I've decided to do is actually mount the radiator just like this. We're going to have the inlet and outlet actually on the other side you won't be able to see it. We'll have the two fans right here in the front and uh, sucking air from the outside of the case bringing it into the inside and blowing through the radiator. Now to mount this we'll be using some double sided adhesive tape. It's really strong, it's not going to go anywhere and uh, what we'll do is later on look at how we're going to do all this when we actually mount the radiator inside the case. So for now let's go ahead and get started with the rest of the build log.
Okay, so what I thought I'd talk about is how to put on a compression fitting. Now, this may seem easy, but um, which it is, but I just like to clarify a lot of things. So, first thing, when we're screwing on a compression fitting, you always go counterclockwise first before you actually turning it to the right to tighten it in. Now, this way, it will find its groove and you won't have any trouble with cross-threading the uh, the threads on your block. So it's a good way um, to just to get used to doing it. Um, it's something that I do and you can see me doing it right here. I'm kind of going back and then once I find the groove I'll go ahead and then start screwing it in. Now one thing about um, compression fittings or any fittings is that when you're installing them on a acrylic block such as this right here there's an acrylic top which is a kind of a plastic you don't want to over tighten the threads because you'll strip out the threads and that's very bad. So a good rule of thumb is to just go as tight as you can with your hand. See, I'm trying to get it as tight as I can. Now, if you can't see the O-ring, that's good. That means it's tight enough. Now, if you don't want to over-tighten it because the O-ring can actually crack and leak, so that's one thing that you don't want to do is over-tighten it. You shouldn't use any tools while doing this um, to avoid the problem with uh, cracking the O-ring or over-tightening and stripping your threads. So next what we're going to do is mount our GPU block to one of our GPUs. Now I'm just going to briefly go over real quick how to actually do this. Um, there are sc screws outside of the fan shroud and once you unscrew all the fans on the fan shroud, the fan shroud will just simply pull off and then you'll just unplug the uh, fan header from the PCB. Now you can see here the PCB is extremely small, <laughs> I think my hand's actually bigger than it. but once you get that off, go ahead and apply some thermal paste, apply the thermal pads on top of the uh, MOSFETs and the memory. Now they're all pre-cut to size, so they should just fit right on there. You'll have to um, take off the adhesive backings to it and they should stick right on there. Then after that, just place your block on top and then screw it back together. It's basically the most vague explanation, but every GPU is different. So I thought I'd end this part of the series on how to show you how I mount my tube reservoirs inside my case. Now I haven't seen too many uh, tutorials or anything on how to do this so I thought I'd show you guys. It may seem like a challenging task but really if you have the right tools and just spend a little bit of time and get the right measurements down it's very simple. So what I have um, and what you'll need is some blue tape which I have here and you also need a drill with a drill bit and uh, some, some of the right uh, mounting screws and of course your uh, clips to mount your reservoir. Now what I've done is I've already mounted or I've already pre-planned where I want my tube in my case. I'm going to have it right to the right of the uh, motherboard. And um, what you do first is you put the blue tape down on the motherboard and then you mark off all the holes that the case already has in it so you don't drill um, or put the screw where there's already a hole. So, because we want our own hole, because without having our own hole, um, you know, you don't really have the flexibility of putting it wherever you want. So, we're going to go ahead and mark and fill in all the little spots where the holes are with a black sharpie. Okay, so once you have your tape on your motherboard and you have all the little holes marked out with black sharpie, we're ready to move on to the next step. Now there are a lot of benefits to actually using a tube reservoir as opposed to a bay reservoir. Now one of the benefits is it's a very easy to fill. Um, it kind of just sits right in your case, the top just screws right off and you're, it's very easy because there's nothing around the tube reservoir that's going to get really in the way. Um, another great thing is that it's really simple to bleed the air out of your loop once you're in the bleeding process of filling. And it's also very easy to drain. Um, you just take the top off again and you could either flip the case upside down or you could suck it out with a syringe that I use actually. Works really good. And it just looks really cool. I mean I just I like seeing it on the right side of the motherboard. Um, you can see all the fluid going in it and moving around and I just like the look and aesthetics of it to be honest way over that of a bay res. So those are just things to keep in mind and uh, we'll go ahead and go to the next step. So for this next step it actually requires a little bit of measuring. It's not too hard though. So what we have to do first is put the clips on our tube reservoir where we want them. I have mine located right above the top thread and right above the bottom base. And so what we need to do is find the mounting holes in the bracket and actually measure the distance in between the two. Now this has to be precise. Um, if we don't get it right then uh, the two the screws won't line up properly. So we have it starting right in the center of the top hole and it's going to end right in the middle. So it's almost about 7 inches um, in length. So we're going to go ahead and uh, mark down those uh, measurements and we're also going to later then replicate that onto the motherboard to um, 
to mark where the holes need to be drilled. Okay, so next we're going to lay the measuring tape on the blue tape, and we're just going to simply place the two dots where our holes need to be drilled to mount our uh, clips. So taking that measurement, we're going to just place the top dot, and we're going to place the bottom dot to where we need to drill. Okay, so grab your drill, and unfortunately I won't be able to show you guys exactly like how I'm drilling this when I'm drilling it, but just apply a little bit of pressure. You don't need a lot because we aren't going to center punch this, and when you don't center punch it, um, the drill can get loose on you and start to go crazy, so just apply a little bit of pressure, and it should drill right through. Okay, so we have both our holes drilled. You can see they're basically right in the center there, and uh, they're right where I want them to be, and so now what we need to do is actually just install the clips on the uh, through the holes. It's very simple. Just put some nuts on your screw and uh, put the screw through and then bolt it to the back. Now when we do drill there are all these little metal flakes that we will have to blow out so use the air compressor or something of that sort to get all that out. We do not want to leave that in the case. Okay so here we have the screws actually um, attached to the clips which are mounted to the motherboard tray. So we're basically complete right now. We got the clips mounted. They're very secure. They're not going to go anywhere. You don't have to worry about your reservoir ever falling off. I mean, these are very secure, let me tell you. So looking at the back, we can also see that I used a washer and just a nut to um, fasten the screws to the clips. Now this is going to make it very sturdy once again, and we won't ever have to worry about this falling. And here's what it looks like with the two clips mounted. Now I don't want to put the reservoir inside the clips just yet. Um, I still have to do cable management and all that, and the tube can get in the way. So I recommend waiting until the very last to do that. And that about sums up my video for this series. Uh, please stay tuned. We're going to be mounting all the rest of the hardware inside the case and doing the tube routing and filling the loop. So please stay tuned for that, and thank you for watching.